I'm here at the intersection of the Road Town Methodist Church Cemetery and Joe's Hill. Now, why am I here? Now, this flash flooding that no one expected to have such a massive impact on the British Virgin Islands, in particular Tortola, also flooded those who are buried here at the cemetery. Take a look. Now, right next door, the Joe's Hill stretch of a road, the entrance of it to be exact, you can see that the box culverts that are part of the pedestrian walkway and which covers the drainage along the roadside have also been uprooted by the massive water which came down this hillside. The debris are along the roadway and work crews are along this stretch trying to clear it up to get back to business as usual. And also in this area is the crab lot or a ghetto area which underwent massive flooding as much as four feet high water. Kathy Richards tells us more. But Peter, one of the hardest areas is the crab lot area, better known to all of us as the ghetto. Right now we have DDM along with the Red Cross here and they're doing some assessments. So we're going to go in, see what's being done, uh, what uh, assessments need to be done as well as to see what assistance the Red Cross and DDM will be able to collaborate to bring some ease and relief to the people here in crab lot, the ghetto. Miss Helen Fred, director of the Red Cross uh, BVI, um, you've been on the ground seeing what's going on. Tell us about the situation as it is right now here in Crablot. Well, a lot of the residents have, but have been flooded out. They've lost many of their possessions, especially their beds, equipment, appliances, clothing, and we're working along with the DDM trying to do an assessment to see what damages have been incurred and um, we're giving the report that we make to the DDM. Okay, and we are now at one residence, one of the hardest hit family. Tell me about the situation here. Okay, this is uh, Mr. Sinclair Brazier. He, his house has been totaled. The walls are damaged, everything has been lost. The water was about four to five feet high and um, he has suffered massive damage. This isn't the first time that you know, he has had flooded, flooding in this area. In fact, every time it rains heavily, he is flooded out. Mm, and I can see from the water stains on the that's wall, how the that's how high the water was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridger is here, you can talk to him. But tell me your general situation. Is here. Bad. Mm -hmm. Disaster. Bad. I understand this is not the first time you're experiencing... Yeah, but not so bad. Never so bad. No. Okay. So, since since this since this flood, mm. uh, how have you been able to get some place comfortable to sleep at night, if any at all? Oh, for the first night I sleep by Shabazz, mm -hmm. by Shabazz step, and then the Tuesday, I'll get a little help for the Tuesday and the Wednesday. But now they tell me now I can't get a more place to sleep, or so I got find some place to sleep. So from today I stuck for find some place to sleep. Okay, so you're hoping now that with the Red Cross, DDM coming in and see what's your situation like, that you'll get some assistance? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Mm. yeah. How many years now you've been living here? Well, what party? Mm. I party nine, so what party? And this is the worst you've ever experienced? Yeah. You alone live here? No, my children and my wife. Oh, so tell me about how they're coping, where are they? Oh, okay, she's somewhere right now on the street, but they're churning by my sister. Mm. for a couple of days and uh, that's it the clothes nothing 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 so my sister probably gonna try to help you the way she can but mm -hmm. and somebody said and give us some bed already now we can't do a bed any situation a bed mm -hmm. the partition the whole structure everything mash up mm -hmm. so you just can't get too bad and think it's a quick fix mm -hmm. you know, so. the, as this look is uh, you need to be totally relocated or something like that yeah and the, and the gut the gut keep come through this over here too the gut come through here my shop whole place, the debris them all about coming. So when the water start coming in, where were you guys? <coughs> me and my children in this room here watching TV. In this room right here. Slow down a bit. Yeah, tell me. 
We were in this room here watching TV at the same time when it came. So I had to grab the tree chair and um, grab the tree chair and try to make a way out. Mm -hmm. Explain to me when you how you got alerted to something going wrong. It was raining and then I see the brown, the brown water coming in, the brown debris. Mm -hmm. So I tell him it's time to go now. So we tell we try to get out now, we were kinda of late, so we try to pull away. And I get them out. And I had some puppies, I had some puppies, I put them in the bucket, nine of them drunk and everything, so I lose some of the arm of fowl them, everything the debris killed and fowl them. If you take a look at the back of the yard here, Hold you will see the debris too, probably mess up the back of the yard too. You know so. The smell is probably some of the fowl them. I had a bunch of fowl and all kind of thing wrong here, intense. Mm -hmm. And all of them are already gone. Okay. And these on the side too, they, all the fence break down. Okay. A real disaster. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Yes, yes. I'm hoping they can help anybody can. You know? Immediately, car. I ain't got nothing else. Thank you. Yeah. Walk over here. Oh, it was a bad experience we had. We had a bad, bad, bad experience. And actually, the water started falling like earlier mm -hmm. when we was by the parade, and we got flooded at first. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, we got flooded again, and then the water was in high this And we had to evacuate upstairs with the kids, the babies, and everybody, all of we. So everything, we lose everything. Everything for us actually gone. Okay, everything. and mm -hmm. has any of the authorities, Red Cross, DDM, anybody came in since then to see what's going on with you? Well, actually, Red Cross was just there a while ago. Mm -hmm. The people were there from Red Cross. And then they said, well, they will get me some clothes and food and things. Because I told them I, I lose everything. I lose fridge, I lose stove, I lose two fridges. Lose everything, everything actually gone. Mm -hmm. Everything here. And so as how has see. life been for you since then? Oh, well, after the flood, mm -hmm. well, cleaning all the time, and then we sleeping upstairs. Mm -hmm. We have to take a little sleep upstairs every minute, but actually not sleep because you still, your mind is not at ease, mm -hmm. and then we just, like, you know, the, so we have to be chilling and thing for the time. But like, thank God we have life. Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Sonia. Sonia, well, we wish you from JTV and our management, we wish you uh, every success. We know that this will take some time, but you will recover. Yeah, we'll recover. Once you have God is around and God is in everything, God takes care of everything. We will recover. Because there's a lot. This is the first time I've ever seen this thing happen in the British Virgin Islands. I've been getting flood all the time once I'm down here. But this is the first time I ever see it happen. And you know, when you have kids and you have to run through this water with these kids, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's very terrible. No injuries? No, no, no. We don't have no injuries. Okay. We just have to save some kids on the other side, be getting drunk and thing, and the um, parents. So my son had to go and try to dive them out, bring them upstairs. So all of we downstairs, we rescue upstairs. Okay. Yeah, we, and we are still upstairs, because we cannot be in there, because right now, as soon as you mop, more water come in. So the house is just in a state. Okay. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, my name is TJ. I'm from here. I'm born here, but I don't live here. I live in New Jersey. I just came for vacation and see my mom. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time in my life mm -hmm. I ever see something like this. Mm -hmm. It's water up to my head. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Okay. And you see, you look around. Look around. Everything is gone. Mm -hmm. All flooded all over. Lots of damage. Mm -hmm. So how have you been coping since? This is, this is, this is I guess, one of the worst vacations you've had. You could say it again. You could say it again. Uh, I'll be coping, but what to the people? Mm -hmm. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to sleep? Mm -hmm. They lost everything. Okay. You, you look around. I can see it. I know you can see it too. Yes. Uh, how do you appeal to whoever authority it is to help? What would you say to the authorities at this moment? Well, I would tell to authorities, come and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. People are going to talk to you and say, my place is gone. If you don't believe them, send out somebody who can see mm -hmm. and come to you and tell you, is this true? Mm -hmm. Look around. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it for myself and show the authorities or whoever in charge mm -hmm. can also see it. Come on now. It's a destroy. Everything is gone. The whole people, them, no place to go, no place to stay. I'm um, thank God we have a record. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. All right, so take us to your mom's place and let's see what's going on here, Auntie. Mm -hmm. 
this is where is my auntie bar this is where she make her living and you can see it the water come is so high and they destroy it move that foundation can you take your camera over here see it was on, it was near to the house see it move six feet down it gone towards the, the pole if the pole if the pole wasn't there it was going to be to the next building there and that is very bad take a look down there see what see where it was that pole see it move it all the damage all the water coming that's, that's really bad but no one was in the shop at the time uh -huh. i'll tell you something thank god thank god for that because it, it's, it's somebody who was somebody was there tell, tell, us, tell us i'm not <laughs> well like my friend said he had two guys sitting here waiting to see what going on but the water was too high they have to jump jump to a window to get to get away you know come on now that's where it, like i said this is the most i ever see in my life i don't know how many inches of water but maybe 19 16 i don't know and that was the most in my life i ever see and thank god thank god everybody's still safe all right okay sir tell me your experience here with this uh, most recent uh, flash flood but that is the second time uh, we get in then kind of then kind of nature like that for well, the first time is then it was so bad mm -hmm. no it, it was look at my house i lose everything i only have a little clothes on top of me so when i wake up i meet the house full of full of water i am most drunk when i will get up to go to pee the water hit me right there mm. in my waist i almost drunk and when i watch everything my fridge my two fridge my bed, my bed and everything done side down was you alone at home at the time no me and my girlfriend mm -hmm. but i uh, put my girlfriend out and i stay in my house you know mm. yeah that's why we were together here mm, okay how long have you been living here i live here from 1979 Oh. I is a VV, a VV Islander. Mm -hmm. My father from here, yeah. I work in Puri Walks too. My name is Manny Steven. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so have you been able to see anybody from Red Cross or the disaster management or well, any government person at all? Well, uh, a while ago, uh, I see a white man with a mug of Red Cross and two ladies come and, you know, take picture from my place and a uh, mug button pool and uh, the minister Myron. Then come, then came and uh, give us some, uh, give us to, to give us some bed, right away back in sand and then, you know, but we ain't got nothing to sleep, you know, so for now then give you a little bed for a week or go sleep and then, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only thing they do. So in the state it is right now, you are still staying in here? I stay in here, yeah, but I ain't got no place to go and uh, I got all my thing there, so, you know, I'm afraid to like somebody could go with my thing, you know, how thief, you know how thief it is. I got a place on there where I sleep on there. My, my, bed, my bed, look at the, look at the mark of the water. Mm -hmm. That outside, you know? So everything my shop ain't got nothing, so. Okay. So you have a you have a plan for yourself right now? Are you thinking of reconstructing right here or you are are hoping that you can find someplace else to go? Well, I, I have a plan to move off from here, you know. But, you know, that, that piece of land, I have a plan to that piece of land belongs to the government, too, so if you don't give me that piece of land, I apply for it already, so I'm going to build something higher, you know. So when the flood comes, they ain't going to attack me. No, okay. That's my plan. But in the meantime, I'm I, I going to find some, some place to live. No, okay. I live here upon 2005, I live here. Plant my, all my planting and my cane and tea, everything gone. The, the breeze gone, everything. Then two wall on there. Mm -hmm. I have a two wall on there, the water gone with the two wall and thing. Yeah, okay. too. All right, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, and we hope that you get some relief at the earliest possible yeah, time. I hope so, I hope so. So, I push in so hard for the government, you know. I said, one Spanish man who pushing hard for the government, and then, so I hope they go help me, you know. Okay. I ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing to eat, nothing like that. Look, I, put, look, I my, my public work close to full of more and thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I work in public works, okay. you know, so I hope they go do something for me. Yeah. Trying to get this um, dot out this manhole here from what we washed down from the uh, hills, causing a blockage and a backup. Mm. So we gotta um, get this um, 
sewage running before our next rain come. Mm -hmm. So we had we had trying our best here. It's a lot of work, a lot of stress. And this is what you've been meeting along many areas that you go? Yeah, many of them. We have about two more or three more to do when we leave from here, but I don't know if it'll be done today. Okay, I know people would say there is no star of the show, but what you guys have to do to make sure that life returns to normal in the BVI is more than worth complimenting. So we want to say thanks to you. Well, thanks to hear that. <laughs> we're trying to do our best we could. Mrs. Fred, we, we heard and saw of the, the disaster, we can safely call it, of uh, St. Clair and his family. But I know for sure you've visited quite a number of other areas across the territory since that major uh, storm on Monday. Tell me what you've come across and you know what are the needs you see that are necessary right now. We were in the Huntam's Gut and the Purcell area. In Huntam's Gut, we assisted two residents to clean out their houses yesterday. The houses had mud about four inches thick on the ground, and those two residents lost everything because the water was like five feet high in those houses, and so everything was destroyed. Uh, we assisted with cleaning, and then we went to the Purcell area where we did an assessment of the area in the Mildred, Mildred Hodge um, compound. And there are nine families in there, and they, they had a lot of major damage, especially their bedding. So most persons really need mattresses and sheets, towels, um, and items like that. And some persons indicated that they need food items. And there are yet some places that you guys have not been able to reach yet? That's right. But DDM has um, gone to many other areas, so um, we're, we're um, coordinating with them. So we're working together. Okay, we've seen Facebook and other social media uh, networking system where persons are calling for help for this, help for that. Can you tell people what resources are available at the Red Cross and where and when they can come and make uh, use of those assistance? Well, we always have clothing and um, persons have indicated that they would like to donate items of clothing and so we encourage them to do that. We also have a few um, items of food that um, um, the Filipino Association donated um, and we have a few linen, bed linen and towels that persons can get. Okay, Mrs. Fred, thank you so much for your time and great work by yourself and team along with the disaster management unit continue to do. We know this is not something that persons are going to get over with very soon, but we know with time things are going to return to normal. Yeah, thank you. It's a difficult situation and I encourage the community to support those who have been affected. So Peter, that's it uh, from us here in Crab Lot, the ghetto area. We've seen of the sad state of affair with that particular one family where three children are also involved, a mother, a father, and everything they have lost. And we know that the situation like this in many other areas across Tertola. You're watching a special edition of JTV News looking at the devastation wreaked on Tortola by flash flooding on August 7 and 8. We'll be right back.